here. Well, good morning, good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. The Lord bless you. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Thank the Lord for the great opportunity that has availed us so we can be here. We can magnify and glorify the purpose for us being here on this great Palm Sunday. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Sunday prior to the Easter Sunday, a great Sunday. It's time to be able to magnify and to worship and to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm glad I'm able to be here, aren't you? Amen. I know you are. Praise the Lord. Get the visitor cards out. We've got we've got Kenneth and Stella Medlock sitting right up there close to the front. Amen. <laughs> uh, bless you guys. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We know that because of this thing that's been going on, that some has not been able to be here for quite some time, and they're just one of those couple. It's been a while since they've been able to be here, so we welcome them. Amen. Good to have Brother Bill McNutt, his family. Amen. Mark, you're a regular, but anyway, but all of you other, God bless you. Thank you, family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome. We're glad to have you guys with us this morning. Appreciate you being with us. It's a privilege. It's an honor that you take your Sunday to be it and spend it with us. Amen. We believe God's going to bless. He's going to minister and intercede. We're just going to look unto the Lord, ask God to minister. Just want to remind you this morning to all those that, that would be interested. The uh, choir is going to be practicing this evening at 5. I know they look kind of like maybe a little bit of a skeleton crew. Hey, it's filling up pretty good, though. Amen. So they're doing all right. When I say skeleton, that means there's more than just bones up here. All right. Praise the Lord. They are alive and well. Praise God. We appreciate it so much. Thank you, Sister Diane. So you guys are going to be joining about five this evening for our practice. Getting us ready for the great, great, great Easter service. Amen. It's going to be coming up in celebration. Amen. That's going to be taking place on Saturday. So uh, keep that in mind. You can be able to look at that at your flyer as far as the updating on that. And uh, to have all your, your goodies brought in no later than this, uh, this, plat, this coming Wednesday at the latest. Uh, need to have all those in. And I think most of them are in, looks like, because, man, you guys have blessed with a lot of the extra uh, items that have been brought in for the celebrations to be taking place on Saturday. Thank you so much for that. We just want to have a big special day. Amen. And we know God's going to honor that. And it's all about one thing. It's not just about Easter eggs. It's not just about kids. It's not just about because it's a special time of the year for a special holiday. But it is the special time to recognize that the crucifixion of our Lord took place. But he's no longer in that grave. He's resurrected. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And more of that, he's soon to come. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Let's stand together. Invite his presence collectively. Let's just ask God to minister and have his way in our service this morning. Everyone, let's just pray in our own way. Father God, we want to thank you this morning for the great privilege that is availed us, Lord, that we can be in your house, Lord. This is your house, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And Lord, it is your presence, Lord, that we know we feel and recognize that is in this sanctuary this morning. Lord, we ask your presence now. Just to minister in every part of the service, Lord, as we yield unto you as yielded vessels. We know you're the power, you're the glory, you're the redeemer. Thank you for the precious blood, your blood protection, your blood covering. We know that's what's made it possible for all those that are here this morning to be here even, Lord. And we give you the thanks and the praise. Be exalted, be lifted up, be glorified in your holy name. And everyone that loves the Lord together said amen. Amen. God bless you. Wave at your neighbor hand. Touch your elbow. Do something. God yes. bless you. Good to be here this morning. Sister Diane, lead us in our worship. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Well, somebody's got a birthday today, but I don't know who. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 
didn't buy you a dump truck full of presents. Amen. <laughs> we didn't bring you no big old oversized chocolate cake. Mm, that's probably a blessing. <laughs> but we are giving you a little something here. Oh, you guys didn't have to do that. For Mercy. your birthday. Well, enjoy it. That's awesome. Amen. <laughs> we love you. Amen. We love you with all of our hearts. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're a great church. God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Are you ready now? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Thank you. I can feel that Holy Spirit now dwelling
I'll get a book and turn to 180 and sing, Everybody Will Be Happy Over There. Oh, yes. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shout 
Let's turn to 116 and sing, Getting Ready to Leave This World. shall wear a robe 
and crown. What a day that's going to be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good singing. Amen. Now this bunch I hear now, I'm not sure you were probably into that all the way, but some of you was. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you for your involvement in worship this morning. Makes all the difference. Amen. Amen. We want to give you that opportunity this morning and our time for our giving this morning. As we want to give, is giving unto the Lord. You come to prayer with our tithes and our offerings. God bless you this morning. Your favors are given, so as the ushers do take their places this morning. Thank God because we know that we can minister and give as giving unto the Lord. God, I know, is going to honor and he'll bless within the giving this morning. And we appreciate so very much for your faithfulness and your minister and intercession and your giving. Brother Rick, amen. Would you come help Brother, Brother Donald, if you would, please? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. As we do give, we know God will bless it this morning, magnify him in our tithes and our offerings. We know the Lord certainly will intercede, and he'll bless this morning in a special way. And we're glad that we have that privilege of that ministry and that time we have that we can give unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Kenneth Medlock, good to see you this morning, brother. Amen. It's a good to see you. I tell you what, I'd like for you honors with the offertory prayer. Would you please? Would you stand? Ask God bless us on the giving, please, sir, this morning. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Granted, Jesus. Yes. Lord, grant it. Amen. Amen. Everybody again said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sister Jan's coming. She's going to minister to us in our, in our giving this morning. So you worship the Lord as she comes, and the Lord bless you as you minister. Thank you, Sister Jan, so very much. Praise the Lord. Amen.
Oh, that the cross has brought heaven to us, but make no mistake, this still more to come, with our flesh and our bone are no longer between where we are now and where we're meant to be. When all that's been lost has been whole again, with these tears and pain no longer exist, no more walking, we're running as fast as we can. Consider this our second win, almost home, brother, it won't be Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good, Sister Jan. Hallelujah. How true. How true. How true. Thank God. Aren't you glad he's on the throne this morning? Hallelujah. And to him be all the praise, all the glory and the honor, not to be shared with anyone else. He alone is worthy, worthy, worthy. Praise the Lord. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. To ask God to touch you, to minister, and to needs. We know that He is our great needs supplier. We know that He's touched you, He's ministered. We know that He's brought healing. We know He brought miracles. But we also know that while we're here, there are still the things that takes place and deals with in this life. So we want to call upon the Lord on the behalf of those that are standing in the need of prayer this morning. There are several as you had your prayer list this morning. It was given to you through your bulletin. You keep that in your prayers throughout the week. But let me, uh, let me mention just a couple of special areas. I know that we're, we're believing Brother, Brother Gary Wilson for the miracle, Brother Gary, keeping him in your prayer for that, for that miracle. But uh, Sister Linda Rogers, we need to pray for Sister Linda Rogers this morning to, to touch her, to minister to her, to her foot, that God's going to intercede. We know that he's a miracle worker. Keep Sister Anita Ward in your prayers as well. We know God is the answer there as well. And then likewise, Sister, Sister Linda Stanford's sister, Artie, she did not get a good report. She did not get a good diagnosis this past week. We need to pray for her. How many of you know that we hear the word cancer, but that word cancer is a name, and the name Jesus is above every name that is named. Amen. And we're believing God. He's going to touch and intercede. So pray for Artie. Artie May Pruitt, that God's going to touch and bring us healing there. There are several others, likewise, that we need to keep in our prayers. You have them on your list to save time for us mentioning and all of them. You are aware of them. Keeping our shut-ins in our prayers, that God's going to touch and minister unto them for healing and deliverances. Thank the Lord because we know that He is the answer this morning. No matter how severe or how minute it may be, God says you have not if you don't ask. Amen. So let's believe the Lord together. How many have special unspoken requests that you'd like to lift a hand up toward heaven? God sees what's in the heart. Believe that without doubt our reservations. And we're going to call upon the Lord this morning. He's going to touch you and minister. Remember lost loved ones, moms and dads, sons and daughters, praying for each one this morning. I know we're still dealing with this, uh, with this virus thing, so pray for God's protection. God's blood covering for intercessions up over us. Also for our nation, keeping our nation in prayers. Our young people are going to be going back. They've had a spring break, been out of school all week. So let's pray for them, for everything go well for them as they go back to school starting tomorrow. Let's believe God to touch you and minister in a special way. And we know the Lord's going to honor, honor our prayers this morning. Believe that? Shout amen. 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 Praise God. Our missionaries as well at home and abroad, praying for them. Lead us in a course. Would you perhaps... Sister Diane, prepare a heart as we go before the throne of grace this morning. Amen. <laughs> 
stand with us in reference unto the Lord that name is above every name this morning let's call upon him let's pray Pentecostals let's get a hold of God on the behalf of these knees let's pray Father God we know that you're the answer this morning it makes no difference Father how great or how minute that need may be we know you're on the throne Lord we know that you're the intercessor Lord the song reminds us Father there's not anything not anything too hard for you and we call upon you we cast all that care upon you this morning because you do care for us you're the almighty god you're the power you're the authority you're the redeemer we ask you this morning oh lord touch you to bring healing lord there are those you said is prayer especially for the own household of faith that need the touch in their physical bodies lord that needs ministry and intercessions lord father we know that you're the one lord right where they are where they're in father taking father in the rehab lord Father, where they might be in the hospital, the Lord, where they're taking therapy. God, we know that you're the answer this morning. And we cast all, all that care upon you. Let that healing virtue do its perfected work within these hearts, within these lives, Lord. The comfort, Lord. Cancer's a name, but your name's above the name cancer, Lord. Lord, that's where the miracle healing comes in. Give us the miracle healing, O oh God. Oh, Lamb of God, let the power of your name be exalted, Lord, especially in these lives, Lord, that is dealing, Lord, with this dreadful disease in Jesus' name, because you're the cleanser, you're the lifter up, you're the power and the authority, Lord, touching moms and dads, sons and daughters this morning. Give us souls, Lord. Saved by the power of your precious blood for the cleansing, Lord. Fill with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Be mindful of our nation, Lord. Help us, we pray, if we yield and we cast our care upon you this morning. Our young people are going to be going back to school this week, God. We pray that you give them your favor, your protections of God. Protect them, Lord, from this fire that is still out there. And, Lord, we pray that you give us, Father, Lord, your interceding favor and healings in Jesus' name and protections and covering because you're the almighty God. We bless you. We bless you. Oh, touching our missionaries at home and abroad. Give them your favor, God. Let them feel that divine touch in intercession. Give them fruit for their labors. For that which only, only you can give. Because you're the almighty God. You are the power. You're glory. Oh, greatly to be praised. Worship him, would you? Hallelujah. All oh, praises to your name, Jesus. To you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, the Almighty God. For your name. Oh, Father God. And greatly to be praised. Oh, we sing praises to your name. Oh, do it this morning. He is worthy. Do you feel him? Do you feel him in this room this morning? Oh, he's the Almighty God. For your name. Oh, the ever living. Ever present. And greatly oh. To oh, the praise. Almighty God. We worship you, Lord. We sing praises to you. Thank you for your precious blood. Your oh, love. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praises to your name. You are God. Oh, Lord. You are God. You are God. For your name. Thank is you, Jesus. And greatly Slip a hand up and praise Him. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for hearing and answering and ministering in prayer. Thank you because the angels are commissioned and sent forth to minister. And Father, to watch over your word that is sent forth in Jesus' name through your precious, 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 precious blood. And all of God's children said, Amen. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you.
Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank God because we know that we can say praise the Lord because His name is greatly to be praised and worthy of all praise and glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, choir. God bless you this morning so very much. Musicians, the Lord bless you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a joy, what a privilege, and what a pleasure it is that we can be in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. And Sister Lori is going to be taking her children over to Children's Church this morning. God bless you guys. Thank you, Sister Lori. Amen. And uh, thanks for all you guys and your, your help. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for our children. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I've got, got a pretty good group this morning, too. Praise the Lord. Easter is on the horizon. Thank the Lord. I told, uh, I told Donnie, our security officer out there, he said, man, we're getting together this morning. Said, it's like we're having an Easter before Easter. Amen. <laughs> having a prelude of what it's going to be about. Amen. And, uh, and the Lord, Lord bless you guys. Amen. For, you, you're getting closer and closer. <laughs> Y'all keep getting closer and I'm going to be able to baptize you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. And God bless you. Amen. You guys are awesome. Thanks for, thanks for putting up with this pastor. Hallelujah. You, you're an awesome, awesome congregation. Hey, you're the best anywhere up there. And saying that, I glanced at something here. Now, since I'm as old as I am, I can say this, all right? Sometimes because of your age, you can get away with some things, okay? Because I know that there are those probably viewing by live stream. If not this morning, they'll be picking it up on YouTube and so forth. I just want to become the envy of all the preachers out there that's going to be looking at this this morning. Because I want you to know the gift that this great church gave me. It made this statement. I want you to hear this plainly. The best pastor on earth, end quote. I, <laughs> Oh, you guys are clowns. I noticed everybody didn't clown, but clout, but that's okay, all right? <laughs> Amen. No, I just had to say that. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you get my age, you can get reckless, okay? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. You're awesome. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the recognition, for, for the cards, and also for all the wishes. You have been totally, totally awesome. Thank you, thank you so much for the recognition. We thank you very, very, very much. Amen, amen. Well, on this special Sunday, don't forget as far as uh, talking about our celebration coming up on Saturday, be sure to view your flyer on all the information on that's taking place. Uh, Brother, Brother Bobby Waldrop and the Waldrop family will be ministering to us on that day as well. And right now, it looked like, Sister Becky, it looked like that there may be some, some good weather at this point. I know that's seven days away, but it uh, looked like there may not be rain, but we'll wait and see. But we'll cross our bridge. when good. So it's looking good, looking good. So uh, praise the Lord. And, uh, and next Sunday as well, it's going to be the, be the main special, special Sunday. I've related this to you, but I know we celebrate Christmas like we do as being the greatest time of the year. But I'm telling you, next Sunday is the greatest time of the year. That's the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his soon, soon, soon return. Amen. 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 God bless you. So good to see you. Good to see you, Sister Stacy, Sister Judy. God bless you. Good to have my daughter and my son-in-law all the way from the great state of Texas. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My grandsons came in, but we gave them permission this morning. They would have liked to have been here, but they have a little eight-hour plus drive to be able to get back to their colleges there and, uh, in South Texas. And we told them, you guys go ahead and get on the road. We'll give you permission to go. Amen. Or they would have been here as well. Amen. And I, I told them, I said, I'm going to tell you what, there's not too many grandparents that can brag about your grandkids as been an eight-hour trip on the road to see their grandparents. So uh, we, if my head's swelling a little bit now, you know why, all right? 
<laughs> God bless you. In the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter number 2. If you would turn there and stand with us, please, for the reading of the word. Philippians chapter 2, if you can, only if you can stand. Philippians chapter 2, I want to begin reading verse number 8. I want to read verses 8 through 11. Amen. Are you there? Praise the Lord. Are you glad you're here this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Verse number 8, in being found in the fashions of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Paul is writing to the church here at, uh, at Philippi. Some of the great words, all the words are great, uh, but some of these you really go into the depth. We don't have time to go into the depth of these words and to the definition from the Greek uh, understanding from all these words. We will not do that this morning, but this is a pro found statement Paul makes here in these verses, really back up into verses 6 all the way through verse 7, but we chose these verses in particular. So that little bit of backdrop, verse number 9, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, everybody say Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, look at what he says here, every knee, everybody say my knee, my knee. shall bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, uh, and things uh, under the earth. Uh, and look what he says. Uh, and that every, everybody say, my tongue should confess. Uh, here is three great words. Uh, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to talk to you this morning on this thought, and that is this, uh, the incredible master plan. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for your presence and your love. Thank you, Father, for your, your Holy Spirit that makes it all possible. And above all, thank you for the precious, precious blood that you gave freely for each one of us, Lord. Thank you for the blood. We ask you, Lord, that you'd place your hand now up over this festival of the ministry of giving, each one in the sound of our voice, Lord, by the way of live stream right here in this sanctuary. God, let that anointing rest up over us, Father, for the glory of your name, that we may be better unctioned through the power of your spirit. And we give you praise and glory now, and thank you for the blood covering. And all of God's children said, amen, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for standing read for the Lord for the reading of God's holy word this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Well, let's take a primary walk and also a pre-walk when we're talking about next Sunday being Easter Sunday because I, I feel I'm believing me ministering more about the resurrection and him being alive. And this Sunday, I want to talk to you a little bit more perhaps prior to that so let's, let's take a walk up uh, the hill called Calvary. As we walk up Calvary's hill for that place, uh, there is a place that we know that is called the skull. There on that place, we know that it was the execution's location. There was the execution that took place there where that it was not uncommon that they hanged people for their crimes. Uh, there is a cross there. But there is that cross that is special above all crosses, no matter how many crucifixions there were. This crucifixion was above all crucifixions because this cross was saturated with holy, holy, holy blood. This holy blood, I want you to know this morning, was planned from the Garden of Eden to the fulfillment of the promise that was taking place. In Him we live, we move, and we have our being. It is in Christ this morning is why we're here in the reality of knowing that that Palm Sunday, the preparations being made for that time that Jesus was going to give himself for you and I. Let me give you four things simply this morning in this area, if I may. First of all, you may take note, you and I were placed in the planner of time. We are in this planner of time that God has delegated and given to us. In this plan or time, I think that it's worth noting that in this notation in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it is what the Scriptures relates and it tells us. And it says that almost all things are by the law. Notice what it says. Purged with blood. And without the shedding of, everybody say blood, there is no remission and we add to that, uh, there is no remission 
of sins without the shedding of blood. Jesus came to give His life. Has He come to give His life? I want you to know really up front, there is only life that comes through the blood. Through the blood is where the life source is and the life source is given. Think about it this morning. When we think about Almighty God, the Almighty God, what He done and what He provided for us through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and now Jesus Himself being equal with the Father, that they are and these are the Almighty God, the Father and the Son. Just think about it. God allowed His only Son, His only Son, to go through the horror and the shame, the disgrace, only allowed Him to go through the agony of a cruel, cruel, rugged cross for undeserving sinners of which that was what you and I were. Now when we stand and we pray, we don't say, God, forgive me a sinner. You're not supposed to be a sinner anymore. Your sins are washed away. Because through the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, thank God, uh, because there was the undeserving sinners and some of you and I might have been one of those undeserving sinners uh, because it is through the precious blood that He cleansed the liar. He cleansed the thief. Uh, he cleansed the murderer. He cleansed the homosexual. He cleansed the drug addict. Uh, he, killed, he cleansed uh, the adulterer. He cleansed the backslider. He cleansed the gambler. He cleansed uh, all those uh, that were involved uh, in God in the sins and through the power of the precious blood of Jesus there is no sin that is too great there is no sin committed that the blood of Jesus Christ cannot cleanse and make one whole because that blood is all powerful and it will never 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 lose its power somebody say praise the Lord we were in that plan of time and because we were in that plan of time cycling this morning this incredible master plan was shaped by one thing, and that is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we think about that this morning, there has to be some scriptures that really comes alive to us. Because there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 57, in those verses of scripture, it tells us, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death the sin the strength of sin is the law but listen what it says thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ somebody shout praise the Lord thank God this morning we know and we understand that that master plan it was incredible as it was shaped by that cruel cruel rugged cross it is in that essence and in that understanding we have to understand and we know this morning um, that Jesus could always see. Listen to me. Jesus, while He was walking here on this earth, um, He was all man. But yet, yes, He was God as well. But because He was all man, um, He felt the pains. Uh, he felt the pressures. Uh, he felt the stress. Uh, and you know what? Um, I really feel this morning, um, I believe um, that Jesus could feel the weight uh, of the shadow of that cross uh, that was upon Him. Um, Brother Rhodes, I believe without doubt or reservations, uh, the Lord felt that. And we can see how that begins to unfold. Um, because whenever we see how did He do it, uh, how did He go through it, um, how did He endure it uh, as He did, um, here's what I think. Um, I believe that Jesus Himself... Um, I believe that he could hear, even while he was here on earth, uh, prior, but while here on earth, uh, I believe that he could hear the screams uh, of the imprisoned uh, in hell. Uh, I believe he could hear the tortures uh, and the torment uh, that was going on. Um, because you know what? Uh, Christ knew he did not want others to go to an eternal destiny that was going to be in the eternal lake of fire. The locked doors of the prison of death uh, had to be opened up. Uh, and there's only one man that could open those doors up. Uh, may I say to you this morning, uh, that man's name uh, was Jesus Christ. Uh, and it is through Jesus on morning only that could unlock uh, those prison doors. Um, sin's bondage, uh, sin's power, sin's hole had to be unlocked uh, was the only way that paradise uh, was going to be opened up um, after Jesus uh, came forth from the grave uh, from the crucifixion uh, of the cross. Um, that's why whenever that hammer 
place that spike into the wrist of Almighty God hanging on that cross, the incredible master plan was fulfilled whenever it was nailed. He was nailed upon that cross. In Revelations in chapter 1 and verse number 18, we know that John so graciously gives us a description of what Jesus looks like. You want to know what Christ looks like? He don't look like a lot of the pictures we see. Now I realize the passion of the Christ gave probably one of the greater descriptions of what Jesus may have looked like going through the torture. But even that does not really give a true description of him. His vision was so hard, more than the sons of man. Church, when you look at that, and we'll be looking at that next week, but when you saw Jesus on that cross, on that cross, he didn't even really look like a man. By the way he was, and the way they had treated our Lord and our Savior, it is from that understanding that John gives us a great description there in John chapter, I mean in Revelation chapter number one. And in that final verse, he's given that description in verse number 18, because Jesus was saying unto him, he is saying, I am he that liveth and was dead. He said, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. That's the victory victorious Christ that we serve this morning. He's not dead. He's not one that has any problems or any difficulties. I'm saying to you this morning, Jesus is alive and well. He's the power of all powers. He's the glory of all glories. He's the mightiest of all mighties. He is the one that we call upon of all because it is in Him that we live, we move, and we have our being this morning. Thanks be to God. God. He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Somebody shout, praise the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Next, we think about that incredible master plan required something. It required a decision. Everybody say decision. Any of you ever had to make decisions? The decision was there. Jesus had to make the decision. Was he going to go through it? Was he going to follow through? He didn't have to, church. He didn't have to do what he did. But he was the only one that could do it that you and I could have and receive what we have this morning with a peace in our hearts with no matter what we deal with and we go through. So the incredible master plan this morning required a decision. Second Peter, very simply, chapter 3, verse Number one, I'm verse number nine, pardon me, give us the, uh, the ultimate scripture that lets us understand and know. Here's what Peter says. He said, it is not my will, Jesus saying this, Peter giving the word, it's not my will that any should perish, but that all should come unto everlasting life. It is his desire that there would be repentance that would come through every, every individual. He didn't go through it for not church. He went through it for you and I this morning that we can experience the blessings and the peace and the love that we can feel for one another and the joy of just being able to walk into the house of Almighty God. And in order it is in Him we live and we move and that we have that being. You say, preacher, why do you keep repeating that? Because that's what we are in Him. That's what we are in Him. Never forget it. Jesus, listen to me. Jesus would rather go to hell for you than go to heaven without you. That's how much He loved you this morning. Think about it. That's why on the eve of the cross, listen to me, on the eve of the cross, uh, Jesus went to the garden. Not to the garden of Eden. Not to the one of luxury or peace of comfort. Uh, but to the garden of decision. I'm going to say decision again. The, the garden of decision was the garden of Gethsemane. In that garden of Gethsemane, we know we read it uh, and we meditate upon it. Uh, but we cannot grasp uh, all that Jesus went through. And I don't have time to digress and go through all that. But I'm telling you, church, 
what Jesus did in that garden, He did it for you and I. Even though that was some 2,000 years ago, you and I were on His heart because His creation was on His heart. And He was crying out. He was praying. And He was doing it in agony. As He was doing it in agony, and He was doing it so seriously, and we said, we read in the Scriptures where that His sweat was as great drops of blood. We even had, we even had physicians, um, doctors uh, that have written books. Um, and I know even Dr. Jeffrey Hamby wrote a book. Um, and on that book, and in it he wrote and gave some great descriptions um, about Jesus um, in that garden of Gethsemane in his praying. Um, and they said by the way it is described um, that undoubtedly Jesus had a massive heart attack uh, in that garden. I'm telling you this morning, uh, Jesus went through it all. He carried it all. He told it all for you and I. But thanks be to God, Jesus' final prayer, His final pain, His final passion, it was for you. It was for me this morning. He kicked down the doors of death. He walked in the domain of eternal destiny. He shook Satan's world and the key of the eternal essence. Jesus said this, Hell, I'll have to go through me in order to get to my children. Thanks be to God, He can't get to you and me because He's got to go through Jesus, uh, and He ain't going to get through Him if we don't let Him. Pardon for my emotion, but I feel that. Uh, hallelujah. There's no accident this morning. There's no accident called Calvary's cross. The crucifixion. This, uh, this did not happen uh, as a last minute decision, as a last minute uh, alternative. This was not in a tragic surprise. Uh, in an ultimate uh, coming to an unexpected occurrence uh, that took place. Um, I want you to understand this morning, um, God does not do things haphazardly. Jesus, uh, when He walks uh, in your life, in my life, um, He gives us an option. And through that option, um, we know that we can understand and know who He is. Um, we know whenever Jesus um, was being baptized um, there by John in the Jordan River. And we know in Matthew chapter 3, verse number 15, um, Jesus, um, He was making the statement um, to John. He says, uh, he says uh, and answering said unto John, He says, uh, Suffer it um, to be so now. For thus it becometh us uh, to fulfill, everybody say, all righteousness and then he suffered him that means he baptized him that's what john did to jesus i'm saying to you that the ultimate plan also brought a master decision that jesus had to make for you and i this morning and in matthew chapter 5 verse number 17 notice what jesus says Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. He says, I am not come to destroy. Jesus said, I come to fulfill. I'm telling you, child of God, this morning, Jesus come to fulfill in your heart and in my heart, in your life and in my life, the fullness of His love and His care of who we are in Him. Because whenever we're in this life, if there's ever been a time, I know it's always been, but I'm telling you, it's becoming more and more critical in this day and hour that there needs to be representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ to walk on this earth uh, is today more than ever before because people are becoming so complacent uh, there is so much fear that is rampant running within this world today we need to hold fast uh, to that nail scarred hand uh, and know that cross uh, was there for you and I because I'm telling to you this morning uh, this incredible plan uh, was a calculated choice um, he made a way when there was uh, no way Jesus did it uh, for you and I this morning. Uh, somebody shout praise the Lord. And lastly but not least this morning, this incredible master plan, uh, it gave death uh, no opinion whatsoever. <laughs> it didn't have no option. Everybody still with me now? Had nobody went to sleep yet, have you? All right. Now that's supposed to happen a couple of weeks ago when you sprung up, sprung forth and come forth. All right. Are you ready? All right. Amen. Death uh, had no option. In John chapter 5, verse number 
28, verse number 29. I like what Jesus says. He says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves is going to hear His voice, what John said. All are going to hear His voice. And in verse number 29, And shall, everybody say, Come forth. <laughs> Hallelujah. They that have done good. Listen to what He says. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Those that are in the graves before us, that's exactly what is going to happen. They're going to come forth prior to us. But I'll tell you what, I'm looking, maybe perhaps, maybe perhaps I'm on, I'm on somewhere or another if I'm still alive. And, and perhaps I may not be, but I am. I, I think I may, may try to reach and grab the heel of my, my dear old mama. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I know she's up there now. I know she's got that glorified body, but God's going to do another marvelous and miracle, some miraculous thing, because He's going to bring those old bodies out of the, out of the grave wherever they are, and He's going to miraculous bring it. There's going to be a co-joining that's going to take place, and they're going to be alive forevermore. We're going to be able to see one another. We're going to know one another, what one another looks like, and thank God it's going to happen. He says there's going to be those that come forth that life, every life thing, and He says unto others uh, the resurrection of and you hate to say that, but it certainly is a reality. Damn nation. There's a heavy choice that must be made in individuals' lives. We can choose life or we can choose death. This preacher repeats himself over and over again, but it is the word that will repeat to you. The greatest thing that God gave for you and I was the gift of choice. We can choose it, what he tells us in Deuteronomy there. Whenever we realize, we understand, I want to be, if I'm in that grave, if I'm in, Brother Kenneth, if I'm in it, Brother Randy, if I'm in it, Brother Jerry, if I'm in it, Brother Brian, if I'm in that grave, hallelujah, I want to be able to hear the sound come forth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know this has been stated and it's been related that uh, whenever Jesus was at the, at the grave of Lazarus. Uh, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And some said, why didn't he say Lazarus? You heard it. You know it. He had to call his name. But he didn't. A whole bunch of them would have come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come forth. Come forth. Um, that's what's so great and wonderful as far as in that master plan. That death uh, has no option. That's like in paradise. Uh, there are souls that were there. That paradise is empty right now. But the souls that were in paradise. Uh, when Jesus, uh, whenever he came forth uh, from the grave. Uh, after the crucifixion uh, of that cross. Uh, when he came forth from a grave. The Bible tells us. Uh, and they came forth uh, from paradise. Uh, and many of those that came forth from paradise. So they walked the streets of Jerusalem before they ascended on up into heaven. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. You say, why didn't everybody do it? God wasn't going to shock everybody. He just wanted to wake everybody's eyes up that would look at it and listen to it and pay attention where there would be no excuses. God made a perfect plan, an incredible master plan plan where man would have no excuse when they stand before him where they'll understand and know God made it possible. We can make it if we'll make up our mind to do it. May I say to you when he says come forth on the doorpost of the grave of every servant of Jesus will know the gentle thunder of the voice of his knock. The door will open Again, the second time, because the first time was when he was made Lord of your life, my life, and their life. Only this time, listen to me, church, only this time, it won't be Jesus who walks into our house. It will be us who walks into his house. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm going to holler back. Better watch it, Dave. Amen. Man, if that don't move you, bless you, your wood's wet this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How? Because the conflict between Satan's dominion of sin and death's hold will hold their final battle to find out who's going to be the ultimate winner. The ultimate winner. 
Caleb, God bless you. You're doing a good job. If you would turn that on for us, if you would, please. I want you to look at this uh, video, but listen to the words as they're showing all the pictures of it. Uh, and uh, listen to what's being said as she brings that up. Amen. The last enemy that's going to be destroyed is going to be death, church. It doesn't have an opinion. God's made the opinion. Notice and listen to the words of this good video. You've heard it before. I know you have. But I thought it was fitting this morning. In the vast expanse of a timeless place where silence ruled the outer space, ominously towering it stood, the symbol of a spirit war between the one named Lucifer and the morning star, the ultimate of good. Enveloped by a trillion planets, clean as lightning and hard as granite. A cosmic coliseum would host the end of the war between the Lord of sin and death and the omnipotent creator of man's first breath who will decide who forever will be the champion. Then the father looked at his only son and said, You know the rules. 
your blood will cleanse their sin and calm their fears. Then he pointed his finger at Satan and said, And I know you know the rules. You've been twisting them to deceive my people for years. Satan cried, I'll kill you, You will kill me this way. The demons wheezed. That's right. There ain't no way. Satan jeered. Go ahead, make my day. Then Satan kicked him in his side, and blood and water flowed. And they waited for the ten count of defeat. God the Father turned his head, his tears announcing Christ was dead. The ten count would proclaim the battle's end. Then Satan trembled through his sweat. In unexpected horror, yet, as God started to count by saying, Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus was the conqueror of death. And because he was the conqueror of death, that's why you and I can have a peace this morning. Amen, amen. Now I understand that uh, I don't know if you remember, some of you do. Some of you wasn't here, so wouldn't. But uh, I know that was not as good as the drama we gave back in the old building years and years ago. But uh, the message is still the same. And I feel I must give recognition to uh, Carmen is the one that he passed away on February 16th of this year. And uh, Carmen is the one that, uh, that did that video and did several others as well. But uh, what a powerful, powerful illustration and powerful, powerful meaning that that was. Amen. Amen. So I want to share that with you because Jesus is the winner. He is the ultimate champion. I'm telling you, that devil's a loser. He can't stand it. And he's going to be put in his place one day. He's going to be put in his place. Amen. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord Jesus, 
We know that you are the champion this morning. We know that you are the one that we can call upon, and you are the presence and the present help. May the power of your holy name be exalted this morning, Lord, as we yield unto you. As we yield unto you, Lord, may your holy presence, Father, just saturate this building again and again, but one more time now. If there's one this morning, Lord, that is suffering and struggling and Lord, with the difficulties in their life, I pray, God, let them recognize that you are the one. You're the champion. You can champion over anything because the incredible master plan, it was something that was done expertly. It was done right. There was no mistakes, and it was done for each one of us. In Jesus' name, his bowed eyes closed. I I wonder this morning if there's... Anyone in our, that is here in our midst, you say, Pastor, you know, I realize that incredible master plan was for me. But you know what? I actually, I've made some mistakes. I have faltered. Because I've made some mistakes and I've faltered along the way. I believe in Jesus wants to renew that fresh acquaintance within our life. If that's you this morning, you want to be, you want to be more than that conqueror this morning in Jesus Christ. But you don't feel perhaps that it's there right now and you want to make it right before you leave this building this morning. Now is the best time that you can do that. No one's looking around to focus on you or to embarrass you. If that is you this morning, you just slip a hand up and back down. Anyone? Anyone? Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. We've been made more than conquerors. But the only way we've been made more than conquerors through the great champion of the winner, the Lord Jesus Christ. Through His incredible master plan, He made it for you and I. We was in that plan this morning. Only through His blood was it made possible. Through His blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can serve Him. Encourage you this morning with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because He is God. (laughs) Do you believe that this morning? Yes, we have. The blood of Jesus. It doesn't only convict, but it cleanses the blood of Jesus not only cleanses but it gives victory through that covering the blood of Jesus gives protection we are conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ and through his blood amen look at me are you an overcomer this morning it's through his blood this morning We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. I want you to walk out of this building this morning feeling something deep in your soul that's much greater than what you're facing and going to face out there in that world, okay? And know that you are more than a conqueror because He's already made the way. He made the way where there was no way It was no way without Jesus. He made the way for you. Aren't you thankful that he did? Listen. You believe that this morning? God bless you. Stand with me all over the building if you can.